Good morning everyone and welcome to a new vlog. Now I actually can't talk too much right now because my cousin Adriana and I, who you will know if you have seen the Disney vlogs, are going to some Christmas markets which I'm so so excited about. These are the first Christmas markets of the year and I honestly cannot wait. So we are going to Llandidno which is a seaside town about half an hour away from me and these stalls are only there from Friday to Sunday so it's currently Saturday the second day of this Christmas market thing and yeah we're gonna go over there, have a browse, hopefully find some cute little bits and of course look for some Christmas presents for family members as well. So of course I am going to take you guys along with me. I'm not sure if I'll take this camera yet. We shall see. I might do actually but I might not take the tripod. I'll just take the camera as it is. So sorry if the footage of me is a little bit shaky because I will just have to hold up the camera without any support. But yeah it is time to head off now. It's 20 to 12 on the 19th of November and I'm so so excited though it is so cold outside it's blue skies but freezing so I think the duvet coat is gonna have to come out which if you've not seen that before <laughs> you're in for a treat it is essentially a duvet as a coat it is lovely but I do look a bit funny in it anyway I'm gonna stop rumbling I'm gonna take you guys along with us and I really hope you enjoy you guys we made it to Waterstones we <laughs> took our time uh, finding it we actually got quite lost because we um, came out of the kind of center the wrong place but yeah we're at Waterstones <gasps> and it's Christmas <laughs> It's 
quite a while later now. It is currently, what time is it? 20 to 8. And I thought that it was about time that I sat down and show you guys what I bought at Waterstones. Now we have been back for a few hours, though I did sit down and watch the England and New Zealand rugby game for the Autumn Internationals, which was a wild ride, but it was such a good game to watch. And yeah, that's just finished now. We're gonna watch Australia versus Ireland in a minute as well. But in between the two, I thought this was a good time to sit down and update you guys. The Christmas markets today was really fun. It definitely wasn't the best. I think there were more food vans than anything and I was looking more towards the independent shop side of it. So yeah, not the best for me in terms of actually buying things. However, I did get a Yorkshire pudding wrap, which you will have seen, with a hog roast in it, veg, potatoes, gravy, all that good stuff and oh my gosh it was amazing. So that was definitely the highlight for me. But I'm feeling Christmassy now. I'm really really excited for Christmas again. I've just been working so hard recently I haven't really had time to get excited for it. You guys probably know that Christmas time for teachers is a time of stress with the Christmas shows and things like that going on and that is definitely the case at the minute. But this definitely put me in a Christmassy mood and yeah I'm so so excited excited for the festive season to properly start now which is fantastic but as you saw I did go into Waterstones and I did buy two books the first one is one that I did show you guys on the table it is the Waterstones thriller of the month I believe and it is Breathless by Amy McCulloch hopefully I'm saying that right I'm really sorry if I'm not the cover itself definitely intrigued me but we have a little tagline at the top here that says six strangers one killer and you might be next which honestly had me sold from the get-go as soon as I read that I wanted to buy it immediately but on the back it just says six strangers one killer journalist Cecily Wong is offered the chance of a lifetime to join an elite team on one of the world's tallest mountains but from the start things start to fall apart an unexplained theft a horrible accident a terrifying note there's a murderer on the mountain six strangers set out how many will return I love a high stakes survival story but throw in a murder in there and you guys know I am sold so yeah very excited for this one it's probably one that I will get to too soon actually because I want to see if my mum would enjoy this type of thing so that I could possibly buy her this book for Christmas and then because this one was on the buy one get one half price table I just could not leave there without picking up a second book to get that offer and so the book I went for is the Twyford Code by Janice Hallett I do have the appeal by Janice Hallett which I can see on my shelf but honestly I'm way too lazy to go and get but this is Janice Hallett's second book I don't believe it follows the same characters or story. I do just believe it's her second standalone novel however her books do have quite similar covers but I do like that because straight away you can tell that this is a book by the same author which is really nice and yeah it just says it's time to solve the murder of the century. Edith Twyford was once a world famous children's author but now her only legacy is the rumoured existence of the Twyford Code, a series of clues hidden in her books leading to what? No one knows, but that hasn't stopped the speculation. Steve Smith can trace nearly all the bad things in his life back to Edith Twyford. As a child, he found one of her books covered in strange symbols. He showed it to his teacher, Miss Ailes, who was convinced it held the key to the code. Within weeks, Miss Ailes had disappeared, and Steve has no idea if she is dead or alive, or if she was right. Now he's determined to find out. But the Twyford Code hides secrets some would do anything to possess, and Steve isn't the only one looking. The race is on to solve the mystery of the century, can you get there first? That just sounds amazing. I love it when there is a second element to a murder mystery book that is some sort of code or game. If you think of like Ready Player One but with a murder involved, that's my jam, you know? So yeah, I decided to get this one. It wasn't my intention to kind of get two murder mystery books but I love it. The colouring of this as well is just my vibe and yeah, I just love that this is a blue haul. But yeah, those are the two books that I bought. I'm very excited to get to both. And then when I got home, I did also have a parcel delivered to my door. This is from Fairy Loot, and honestly, I don't have a clue what it is. I got the dispatch note a few days ago and was very, very confused. So I thought it would be fun to open it up on camera and see what I ordered a few months back. I'm awful at doing links, you guys. I can never actually <laughs> open these parcels. See, it just keeps... <laughs> keeps falling off oh my goodness right I'm gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way and just kind of rip it to get into it there we go <laughs> 
But this is, oh, of course. Of course, right, it's upside down and in some bubble wrap, but you might be able to tell what this is. Let me just get it out of here though so that you can see it properly. Okay, so we have The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber, which is the sequel to Once Upon a Broken Heart by the same author, of course. I'm really sorry if this isn't in focus, it's so hard to see, but this is the front cover. We have this sprayed edge, which I'm not too keen on, but it doesn't matter. And then we do have this quote on the back and it does just say, not every love is meant to be. Right, let's see if there's anything interesting and under the dust jacket oh straight away we have some end pages there which are beautiful and oh wow okay we have this design printed onto the book itself which is gorgeous look at that shine oh my gosh i am obsessed with this it has one on the back as well it has an axe oh wow this is amazing. Not only that, we also have artwork on the inside of the dust jacket, which again is beautiful. And then let's double check. <gasps> this book just keeps on giving. These are the end pages at the back, which has completely different art. This is quite neutral, whereas obviously the ones at the front are just a pop of colour but I love the contrast. And then let me just double check if it's signed. Yeah, of course it is. It's a fairy loot edition, what did I expect? <laughs> but yeah, this is such a beautiful book. The only thing I'm not loving is the sprayed edge because I'm not too keen on a block sprayed edge and then a kind of pattern on top. But other than that, this is one of the best special editions out there. Wow. I am very impressed with Fairy Loot with this one. I haven't actually started this series yet because I do want to finish out the Caravelle series, which I think I'm actually going to have to restart because I read the first book as soon as it came out. I then waited years to read the second book. And then again, like two years has passed now. So I will definitely have to reread those before finishing off the last book and diving into this series because this follows on from the Caravelle series. So I would rather kind of know everything that is going on that I need to know before diving into the spin-off books. Because of that reason, I can't tell you anything about this series, unfortunately, but I will leave the link to this book down below if you do want to check it out and have a read of the synopsis. I will do that with these two as well. But yeah, this is my haul from today, which again is very blue. I absolutely love it. And I cannot wait to get to definitely the books that I bought at Waterstones, but then eventually The Ballad of Never After as well. That one will definitely take some time though, but yeah, I think Breathless is one that I will get to first. Maybe even in this vlog, we shall see. And then, yeah, I will definitely be picking up the Twyford Code soon as well. Right, we are finally gonna move on to what I'm currently reading, and that is Nemesis by Agatha Christie. Now, I am currently around page 137. This was where I was the last time that I updated my reading progress. I'm currently listening to the audiobook for this. That's how I consume the majority of the Agatha Christie stories. And yeah, from my last checkup, I was on chapter 12, but I have definitely listened to a bit more of this now, so I am a bit further along. I will firstly read you the synopsis for this book, and then I will go into my personal views and opinions of it, and of course what I'm thinking of it so far. So on the back it says, In utter disbelief, Jane Marple read the letter addressed to her from the recently deceased Mr. Raphael, an acquaintance she had met briefly on her travels. He had left instructions for her to investigate a crime after his death. The only problem was, he had failed to tell her who was involved or where and when the crime had been committed. It was most intriguing. Soon she is faced with a new crime, the ultimate crime, murder. It seems someone is adamant that past evils remain buried. So that is definitely a brief synopsis, but it does sum it up quite well. So essentially, Miss Raphael is a character that does appear in the Caribbean mystery book by Agatha Christie, which is of course another Miss Marple mystery. And I'm not going to spoil that one too much, but he does play a part in solving some things in that mystery whilst they are on holiday together, him and Miss Marple. And so fast forward a year now, Miss Marple receives a letter from Mr. Raphael's lawyers asking her to go and meet them. And then they 
they disclosed that he's left some money for her in his will. However, in order for her to get this money, she needs to solve a crime. Now, she doesn't get any information other than that, but it's really cool because every now and again, a letter will arrive from Mr. Raphael or someone will pop up saying like, oh, I knew Mr. Raphael. He told me to look for you here sort of thing. And it's so, so interesting the way that it's all set out. Again, it's kind of like that second element in a mystery book that I'm just obsessed with. And I have such a good time trying to figure out what is going to happen next and who we're going to meet and what we're going to find out. And this book is so well done, you guys. I am absolutely loving it. And that hasn't really been the case for me for a lot of Agatha Christie books. You guys know I do love them, but a lot of them have been three stars for me. They're quite average, but a good murder mystery as a whole. However, this, I just want to pick up every single spare minute that I have. I am loving it so, so much. I'm loving listening to the audiobook and yeah, I'm just having the best time with it. And I think one of the main reasons that that is the case is because we follow Miss Marple from the start. Now you would think that the Miss Marple series do focus heavily on Miss Marple and of course they do. However, she doesn't normally turn up in one of her books until the last third. But in this one, we're with her from page one and it's so refreshing to see her getting involved in the mystery from the get-go. And I think that is why I'm loving it so much. It's because I just love the TV adaptations for these, the ITV ones. Miss Marple is front and center in every single episode and I feel like you truly do get to know her. However, I have felt a certain disconnect in some of the other books in these murder mysteries because we just haven't been connecting to her as much as we could. So yeah, with this being the final one, I'm a bit annoyed, but I'm so intrigued. I really can't remember what happens from the TV adaptation either. So I'm going in pretty open-minded and yeah, it's just so, so good so far. There is a lot going on, of course, as there is in all of these murder mysteries. We have a lot of suspects. We have a murder that has already occurred and we have Miss Marple out in the big wide world trying to figure all of this out and figure out what the actual crime is as well. So that is a very rambly update on where I'm up to. It's so far you can tell just by how excited I'm getting that I'm just loving this book. I'm finding it hard to speak actually because I just want to kind of get everything out but yeah this is so so good. I'm over halfway and I really do want to finish it if not tonight tomorrow morning at the latest so yeah this is one that I should finish relatively soon and I'm so excited to do so but it is also quite sad at the same time actually because this is the last full book that we have following Jane Marple. The next book is called I'm having a blank I can't even see it I think it's the 13 problems which is a book that looks like this one but it is a short story collection so I don't feel like we're gonna connect as much to her again now as we do in this book so this is the last one for me. I will of course read the short stories as well, but you guys know I'm not too keen on short stories anyway. I do like a bit of depth and development in my stories and I feel like I just don't get that from the short story collections. Right, I feel like I have rambled on a lot at you guys now though, so I'm gonna go and have a little break. I'm gonna go and watch the Australia versus Ireland rugby match, which will definitely be a good one, and then I might even put up the Christmas tree, you know, or I'll save it to tomorrow morning. I'm not too sure. I am very tired. I've had a busy day, so we'll see, but I'm so excited to do that now, especially because I've been to the Christmas market today and I'm in the Christmassy mood. So yeah, might do that tonight, might put it off till the morning. We shall see, but of course I will show you guys that. But I would like to finish off Nemesis first and update you guys, just because I feel like there's been a lot of B-roll footage in this vlog so far. And I would also really love to finish a book and tell you guys my final rating for it because I don't think I've done that in a while. Hi guys, it is Sunday. It's a little bit later than I wanted to update you guys. A lot later actually, but I've had such a busy day, which I will go into in a second. However, I did start off the morning by finishing off Nemesis by Agatha Christie and this was a five star. I absolutely love this. I mentioned my reasoning behind that in the previous clip, so I won't repeat myself, but this was such a well done story where Miss Marple was front and center. We saw a lot of her thought process whilst she kind of tries to sort out information to help her eventually solve the crimes, which was so, so interesting. And we also got to see her interact with other people that we've kind of seen before and people that we haven't. But what I loved about this is that she is also very independent. She is, of course, an old woman, but that does not stop her from doing anything that she wants to do. And it was just an all-round 
amazing book so I'm so so happy that I decided to pick this one up this week and I definitely finished off the Miss Marple mysteries on a high. I do think I mentioned Miss Marple's final cases last night as well which I have already started actually. I am currently listening to the audiobook and I have two hours and seven minutes left. I'm so sorry that I'm shaking. I finished a workout not too long ago that was focused on my chest and so my arms are honestly dead right now so yeah please excuse that but yeah I've started this I'm only a few minutes in but we'll see how that goes because as I mentioned it's a short story collection so I'm not sure how I'm actually going to enjoy it but I'm liking the story so far Miss Marple is a part of it and yeah I'm excited to see where it goes and what mystery we get next and then another reading update that I have for you. Honestly, I don't read for months and then when I do read, I read everything. So I have Magisterium, The Copper Gauntlet. This is the second book in the Magisterium series, which is co-written by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. The first one looks like this. It's called The Iron Trial. And what I'll do, I'll just read you the synopsis of this. It says, Cal has no idea what he'll come up against in The Iron Trial, but he knows that if he passes the test, he'll become a student of magic at the Magisterium. Only all his life, Cal's been warned to stay away from magic, so he tries his best to do his worst, but fails at failing. Now he must enter the Magisterium, and it's even more sensational and sinister than he could ever have imagined. Essentially, this is a book about a boy that goes to a magic school. He faces a lot of different trials in his lessons in order to become a mage by the end of his first year. Of course, a lot of stuff happens along the way. Secrets are revealed, and so we follow the three main characters as they deal with that whilst also becoming friends as well. So as I mentioned, I have started the second book now. <laughs> Kiwi might be making an appearance, so sorry about that in advance. I really enjoyed the first one when I read it. I read it quite quickly as well, so I'm hoping that that will be the case with this one. Not sure what is in store, to be honest with you. I genuinely have no idea how this is gonna go, so I guess that's quite refreshing, actually. I haven't really read the synopsis of this book, and and from what I've read in the first two chapters so far, or three chapters I think actually, it is intense. Like a lot of stuff has happened, which has been quite upsetting actually. So yeah, I feel like this is going to be a good one. And I'm going to try and do what I did with the first book, which is to read some of it every night before bed. That worked really well when I was reading the first book, as I mentioned. And it's such an easy book to fly through as well, that I definitely think that will be the case. So I am going to sit down tonight and read some more of this. However, I do think that it's fine. Finally time to put up the Christmas tree. I'm so so excited you guys. I was gonna do it earlier on today but as I mentioned we've just been so so busy. We did the food shop this morning, took Kiwi for a walk, Tom's parents then came over, we watched the France versus Japan rugby game for the Autumn Internationals, we then watched the opening game for the World Cup which was Qatar versus Ecuador. We did our Joe Wicks workout, we are doing the 21 days of strength workouts because we both want to get a lot fitter and healthier and stronger so yeah that's the thing now that we've decided to kind of do together and we do it after work so today we decided to do it at half time during the football game and we kind of did it as like a superset so we could do it quite quickly so I'm definitely feeling it all kind of here which obviously it's good it shows that it's working but yeah I'm gonna be hurting tomorrow which is not great anyway after that I made tea, I went for a bath, and now I'm here filming this clip for you. So it's been a busy one, and yeah, I just really do want to put the tree up now. I'm so, so excited to do it. And with me going to the Christmas market yesterday, I am definitely in the festive mood now. So I'm gonna go downstairs. I think we might put on I Am A Celebrity. We watch it on catch up, so we're kind of a day behind, which isn't the best, but we don't like the ads, so. <laughs> That's how we're doing it to kind of skip all the adverts and things like that and even though I would love to put on a Christmas film, if we don't keep up watching I'm a Celebrity every day then we're not going to carry on with it and this is what happens every year so I'm determined to finish off the series this time round and the Christmas films can wait until next week. Of course I will film some b-roll for you guys but I'm not going to lie, it is definitely not going to be the most interesting thing in the world. We have quite a small tree just because the gap that we have in the living room is quite small and I don't actually know if we're gonna bother putting up a lot of the Christmas lights that we have mainly because of the cost of living crisis to be completely honest with you I'm not sure if we can afford to 
put on the lights all that often but also because when we kept them <laughs> last year they were definitely tangled so it will probably take a while for us to undo them and put them up so it might just be too much of a stress for today but the Christmas tree is definitely going up which is so so exciting and I will of course film the process for you guys so that you can see what kind of vibes we're going for this year. And just like that, the tree is up. And I say just like that, it took us a while, didn't it, Tom? Mm -hmm. Mainly me, because you were watching I'm a Celebrity. <laughs> mm -hmm. But Kiwi is not too keen on it, but as you can see, she's kind of okay now. But yeah, when it first went up, she wasn't, oh no, she wasn't too keen. But she seems okay now, we'll see. But yeah, this is what nights at our house are like. But the tree is up. It looks good, I want to say. I'm not too sure, but yeah, this is what we've gone for. <laughs> Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Long time no see, you guys. I know for you, it's literally just been a couple of seconds, but for me, it's been about a week, which once again, I'm so, so sorry about. Life has just gotten in the way. I've been so, so busy. I haven't been 100% in myself either. And then this weekend, I've just been really, really unmotivated. I filmed some videos today and and I've just edited my first one and I'm out of focus throughout the majority of it which has honestly got me really frustrated and made me want to cry. Like that's not even me being dramatic, that's just how I'm feeling right now apparently. It's just so disheartening when you spend so long filming and then you come to edit it and there's a big problem. So yeah, that is essentially what's been going on. I think I'm in a weird life slump right now and I think it's because we are working all the way up until Christmas Eve. Essentially we finish work on the 23rd this year and I definitely think it's getting to me because I'm the type of person that loves the run-up to Christmas not so much the time off afterwards so yeah very very busy and I'm not getting to enjoy the elements of Christmas that I typically love. Moving on from that though sorry to start off this clip being really depressing but I have actually finished Miss Marple's final cases I finished it pretty quickly gave it three stars I think as I mentioned wasn't too keen on the short story aspect of it. I found myself zoning out of a lot of stories and not really paying that much attention to them. So it definitely wasn't the best reading experience for me, but I am glad that I read it and I have officially finished the Miss Marple books now, which is crazy. In terms of some other books, I am still reading The Copper Gauntlet, which has a Reseater's bookmark in it, even though I have hundreds of bookmarks. I am not that far into this at all. I am 50 seven pages in so I'm up to chapter five. I have not been picking up this book you guys. I don't know why. I think again it's the fact that I'm struggling to sit down and read something physically because I'm just not with it at the minute. I'm very easily distracted and I'm feeling quite tired so I've been going to bed early. I've not really been finding time to give myself to read. I've been editing or I've been doing some work for school and things like that and yeah I just haven't been prioritizing this unfortunately but I'm hoping that I can finish it in the next day or two because I really do want to wrap this vlog up. It's been going for over a week now as I mentioned and yeah I feel like any longer and you guys will definitely lose interest so need to finish this one or I might have to put it down for a while just so I can get a start on my December TBR. But even though this one is a bit of a slower one I have also started another book which you will have seen in the thumbnail anyway but that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I decided to download the audiobook for this mainly because again I've been struggling to read things physically and I have made it to page 233 which is chapter 14 so I'm about halfway through which is definitely good going and I'm happy to report that I am really enjoying this. Again though I definitely feel like I'm not giving 100% to this book. I feel like if I sat down and read it physically I would definitely be retaining more information and getting more out of it but I did need an audiobook to listen to and I wanted to finally get to this book especially because Hellbent is coming out next year and I do want to be caught up by that 
point. This is Lee Bardugo's first adult book. It is a dark academia novel in which we focus on different magical societies at Yale. In this one we follow our main character Alex Stern who has been tasked with monitoring the activities of the secret societies of Yale. One day though a girl is murdered on campus and Alex seems to be the only person that won't accept the police's story that this wasn't a murder and so she decides to take up this case herself to try and solve the mystery and get justice for our murder victim. And it just says here because Alex knows the secret societies are far more sinister and extraordinary than anyone ever imagined. They tamper with forbidden magic, they raise the dead and sometimes they prey on the living. This is such an interesting book because we do actually have ghosts in here which are known as greys. Alex can see greys which is very unusual and is one of the main reasons why she was asked to undertake her role at Yale and so there's a fine line here between the world of the living and the world of the dead and that is an aspect that I'm really enjoying in this. It is quite sinister. I will say that we have a lot of violent scenes in here, quite graphic and gory as well so if that's not your type of thing then definitely stay away. Trigger warning as well for rape or attempted rape. It's kind of a bit unknown at the minute whether anything actually happened but that is something that did come up. It made me quite uncomfortable as it's meant to, but I did want to mention that here just in case any of you would be triggered by that, and so if you are, definitely don't pick up this book. This is definitely one I can finish in the next day or two. It seems a lot more likely than this one at least, but honestly, I'm really hoping that I can finish out both of them, and as I mentioned, get a start on my December TBR because it's currently the 4th of December, and if you've seen that video, you'll know that I have have a lot of books that I'm planning on reading this month so I need to kind of wrap these up now having such a good time with this one haven't really gotten far enough into this one yet to have any opinions on it but I do have a long day at school tomorrow I have a staff meeting after school which means I won't get home till about six probably I want to go and work out I will have to take Kiwi for a walk I'll have to make tea have a shower that sort of thing so I'm not quite sure how much time I'll have tomorrow night but I can give myself up until Thursday at the latest because this vlog is going up Friday whether I finish these books or not and I definitely don't want to be scrambling at the last minute to put it all together so I'm giving myself until Thursday at the latest in my brain though I'm gonna say Tuesday but yeah we'll see because as I mentioned my life is just a bit chaotic right now and things aren't going to plan so yeah sorry for the very rambly update hopefully it made a bit of sense to you guys this is where my brain's at at the minute though and and yeah, it's just a bit overwhelming, so <laughs> sorry about that. I might try and read a bit in bed tonight. It's currently 10 o'clock though, and I need to get up quite early tomorrow, so maybe not. I am also very tired. I need to take off my makeup, take my contacts out, and snuggle this little girl, so... <laughs> Yeah, we'll see about that. I am going to try though. I definitely need to make more of an effort to sit down and prioritise reading as I said. And so for now, I'm going to end this clip here because I've just been in a weird mood throughout this one and I'm really sorry about that. But yeah, I don't have too much more to say anyway. I am going to grab this little girl <laughs> so you can see her. What have you got? Have you stolen a bubble? Oh, Kiwi. Let go. Got some. Yeah, she's stolen my scrunchie. <laughs> Look, I know that it's your birthday this weekend, but you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, Kiwi's turning two, by the way, so give her some birthday love in the comments below. She is definitely going to be spoiled, and I will probably film that in the next vlog. But yeah, I'm going to go now <laughs> because I won't finish this clip otherwise, and I will chat to you guys as soon as I have some more reading updates. I did it, you guys. I have finally finished Ninth House, and oh my goodness, I love this one. I didn't give it five stars. I don't know why, but it didn't quite hit that five star feel for me, but I did give it four stars. I was so invested. The story gripped me from the get-go and I am definitely intrigued about what's going to happen in the next book now. I'm so glad I decided to pick this one up because as I mentioned the second book is out in January of 2023 I want to say and I'm going to be wanting to pick it up as soon as it comes out because the way this ended just brought about so many new questions and different theories and things like that and expanded the magic within this world as well and the different possibilities within that. 
so definitely excited to carry on with this one I think it is just a duology so hopefully we get some answers in the second book but this could definitely be read as a standalone actually I think if you were to read it as a standalone it's such a good contained murder mystery magic story that gives you everything that you would want it has a satisfying ending whilst also leaving room for the sequel as I mentioned and yeah I had such a good time with it would highly recommend it is definitely worth the hype and we'll see whether I read Hellbent audibly or physically because I feel like if I read this one physically I would have given it five stars I would have gotten a lot more into it however because I've been listening to it via audiobook I haven't really had the chance to be that absorbed in it because I'm listening to it on my car journey to and from work or on my dog walks and so I'm not really getting the chance to actually get immersed in the story completely because obviously things just take your focus but I sat down and listened to two hours of this book last night and just finished it in one sitting it was fantastic so much stuff went down but it was very well done and satisfying and yeah I'm so so glad that I have managed to read this now and that I did end up loving it I have now decided as well that I am going to put the copper gauntlet down just for a little while so that I can focus on my December TBR and the Christmassy books that I would like to get to obviously before Christmas I've only read about four chapters of it so I don't think it's worth the time and effort at the minute however I will be picking it up after Christmas probably in the new year and I think that that will do me some good I will be in the right headspace for it again and yeah hopefully I just get sucked into it a lot more than I did this time round so it's not a complete DNF it's a put down for now situation and I will be picking it up soon as I mentioned but I'm so excited to get to my Christmassy books my December TBR is now up on my channel so I will leave it linked up above and down below if you do want to check it out I've got a mix of different Christmassy books and non Christmassy books and a load of different genres actually so hopefully it'll be a good reading month I am gonna start my TBR today because I have a new audiobook lined up already that I'm so so excited for and of course I have so many physical reads that I could choose from as well I am gonna end this video here though because my cousin has just texted me saying that I need to go because we are going swimming today we're going to the gym and going for a swim afterwards which is why I'm in my coat and my kind of workout gear I suppose so I am just heading off to do that but I wanted to update quickly before I went swimming because I would look like a drowned rat otherwise <laughs> nobody needs to see that so I am gonna wrap this video up here I know it's been a long one again which I'm so so sorry for but hopefully you enjoyed the Christmas elements that were in it and of course the trip to Waterstones if you have made it this far into the video though and would like to let me know that you're still here please go ahead and leave me a snake emoji down in the comments I don't know how well you'll be able to see but there is a snake on the cover of Ninth House and it just looks so cool so if you don't have anything in particular that you would like to say but you would like to let me know that you're still here please please do go ahead and do that now. As well as that, don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. It truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye.